Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Brigitte, here to talk about finances and how they can be a blessing to you, your family, the body of Christ, and all of humanity, if they are managed properly. And that's what I share on this channel. Faith-based principles, habits that I've used that have allowed me to be and remain debt-free for about 15 years now. And not only that, but to take the money that I would have applied to debt and instead invested and obtain financial freedom. Now, if that's something that interests you, then stick around. So today we are going to talk about what do you do when you find yourself in a situation where there's a whole lot of month left over, but not a whole lot of money. In other words, uh, you cannot pay all of your living expenses and your debt. And it happens to many people. It has happened to me when I was on my debt free journey or journey to becoming debt free. There were several instances, not just one, but several times when I could not pay all of the bills and all of my living expenses. And so there were principles that I used and habits that I developed that helped me to get out of those situations and then build systems so that going forward, I didn't have to go through that. So I'm going to share with you what I did. And again, I'm no financial advisor or financial expert. So the first thing that I did that worked, cause I did a bunch of things <laughs> that did not work for the things that I did that worked. Things that worked for me were one to calm myself down and take some time, even if it's five minutes, just to sit down and to really pray and try to get some calmness, some peace. Listen, for me, I, I make some of the dumbest decisions when I am just stressed and I'm just reacting. I'm not thinking it through. I'm not planning. I'm just reacting. And so for me to calm down and pray and sit still really, really helps because you don't want a knee jerk reaction. You don't want to just go up, go out and run up your credit card bill. And then in another few months, you're going to have the headache of a very high credit card bill. And now you're starting this cycle all over again. The next thing is ask God to give you some strength and some wisdom to not start the blame game. You don't want to blame your spouse. You don't want to blame your kids. They always want something and they want this expensive stuff. You don't want to do that. And you know what? You don't want to blame yourself either. Yeah. Maybe you got in debt because there was some medical problem. Maybe you're in the situation you're in because you're going through a, a divorce or a separation. Not only that, maybe there's a layoff and okay, we'll be honest. Maybe you did run up the credit card too much. Maybe you did purchase a home that's a little bit beyond your means or a car, but however you got in this situation, you know what the truth is? You're in this situation. And blaming anybody, including yourself, is not going to help. So make up your mind. I'm not playing the blame game. Creating priorities. We have to create priorities. When there's not enough to go around, we have to decide what is critical. So that would include things like food. Whether or not you have debt, you have to eat. Whether or not you have debt, you need a place to live. If you are on prescription medication, that's a priority and you have to recognize that you have legal obligations that if you do not pay them, they will put you behind bars. You want to make that a priority if at all possible. And let me say something particularly to my brothers and my sisters of faith. Listen, if you're going through a very tough time, please do not allow your pride to keep you and prevent you from going out and getting social services. 
Listen, this is a temporary situation and you may find yourself in a position where you need to go to a food bank and get some food so that you and your children can survive this difficult but temporary situation and move on with your life. You're wanting to survive so that you can later flourish. It does not mean that you are not a person of faith. You continue to believe God, you continue to trust God, and you continue to do what he is putting in your spirit so that you survive. The next thing is aggressively cutting back on expenses. You may have to stop eating out so much. Um, if you are a person who eats out three, five times a week, you may have to cut that back quite a bit or in some, in some times for me, I cut it out altogether. I really don't believe that the quality of your food is a good place to cut back expenses because if you cut back on the quality of food and you are buying very fatty cuts of meat or you eliminate fruits altogether, or you eliminate vegetables. In the long run, those choices that you thought were cheap will turn out to be quite expensive in terms of your overall health. Shopping. It may be time to stop shopping for anything. Maybe you have to really consider thrift stores. And that's something that, you know, ego wise is something that really is offensive to you. Well, you may want to pray on that because this may be a real opportunity <laughs> to work on that ego. And I will say sometimes you find some really good deals at thrift stores. If you have debts, call your lender and communicate with them and let them know what is going on and find out if they can make accommodations for you. You might be very surprised. You're like, no, no, no. They would never, you might be very, very surprised that they are willing to work with you, particularly if it's something with medical or divorce or something or layoffs, they may be very willing to work with you, but at least make the effort, make the phone call. Now, the next thing is increase earnings, if at all possible. One way that you might want to do this is find out if you have the kind of job or employment where you could work extra hours and don't let pride get in your way. Um, you may want to work at uh, Uber Eats for a while just in order to get cash flow moving in your direction. Go on YouTube. There are so many side hustles that are available and pray about it and see what, what, what might work for you. Everything might not work for you because of your situation, your children's schedule, your spouse's schedule. Sometimes every idea won't work for you. And sometimes it's just not your personality, but go on YouTube, look at some of those side hustles and don't just roll your eyes and go, whatever, actually pray about it and see if something appeals to you. Who knows, could be a new career for you, but try to increase income. And when you do increase income, ensure that you discipline yourself and use it, of course, to pay off debt and to give yourself some breathing room. Others have walked in your shoes. Others have had the same challenges <laughs> and they have not only survived, but they have excelled and they are here to tell the story. You can do it too. I pray that this encourages you and that you realize you can make it. God bless you. Talk to you next time.